Hi, thanks for joining me today on another long division lesson. Last time, I showed you how to share something among some friends so that they each got their fair share. Well, today's lesson's a little different. Today I'm gonna show you how to divide a number and what would happen if there was something left over that we couldn't share among all of our friends. That is called long division with remainders. Sometimes you just can't share a number equally and you'll have something left over. So that's what a remainder is. Something that's left over that we just can't share equally. I'm gonna show you what that looks like today using long division and uh, some, some tips along the way. So let's get started. So as you can see here, I have a problem already set up for us. I have 612 divided by five. Now, just a quick recap of what we talked about last time. Five is my divisor. And a good way to remember what a divisor is, is it's the number of people, for example, that you're sharing with. So I'm gonna be using toys today instead of paper. Um, I've got some little toys here and I am going to get my five people that I'm going to share it with. So I have one, two, three, four, five. I have five people. So you can use toys, paper, you could use little objects, whatever helps you um, do this work and makes it more fun for you. All right, next. I have my 612. That is the dividend. That's the number that we are sharing out. And remember, this bar here is the division bar, or also called the, the house, the division house, or the division bracket. And pretty soon we're gonna get a quotient, which is our answer. So for today's example, let's pretend that there was a talent show contest at school and five kids got first place. I know, that's a lot of kids. But they, it was a five-way tie. They all tied and they all get to split this $612. And it's my job as the judge to split this money so everybody gets their fair share. Because we don't want to let anyone um, get, up, get upset or feel left out or that someone else got more money than them. That is just not fair, especially if they all got first place. So, this is what we're gonna do. Step one was get your divisor set using toys or paper. I got that all ready to go. I got my five friends. Step number two, I need to make my dividend with my cash. So we have $612. If I were to break this number down for you, I have six hundreds, I have 110, and two ones. So let me show you what this looks like using my play money. I'm gonna start by counting out my six hundreds. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six hundred. I need one ten. That's easy to make. Get my one ten. And I need two ones. So I'm gonna take two ones from my pile. Now, this is super, super important. It's an extra step. And I know some kids don't want to do the extra step. But if you don't take this extra step and count and make sure that your money matches this number here, you could get the wrong answer in the end. So it's always good to double check. I'm going to make sure I have 600s one more time. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. One ten, two ones. Okay, six hundred twelve dollars. Now I'm going to put my money up here. I'm going to move my little signs here because I want to make sure I can keep all my money organized when I'm sharing it with my friends. Okay, I got my space all set to go. I've got my writing utensil, and I'm ready to share. Are you ready? Okay. I'm gonna start with the largest place value, which is the hundreds. And I'm gonna see if I can share my hundreds with my five friends. So here we go. There's a hundred for you, 100 for you, 100 for you, 
100 for you, 100 for you, and I have more money so I could keep going, right? <gasps> Wrong. If I give this $100 bill to one of these children, the other four kids are going to be so upset with me. They're going to say, Heather, that's not fair. She gets an extra $100? And I have to make sure that I'm sharing as fairly as I can. Now, hmm, what can I do with this 100 I need to find a way to break it up so that I could give it to these kids equally. Now, I could try to rip the money, but then they wouldn't be able to spend it, right? Nobody wants a ripped up $100 bill. Oh, I know what I could do. I know from working with other math works in the classroom that 10 tens is the same as 100. So I think I could make a trade. I could go to the bank do, 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 and say, oh, hello, banker. Could you please give me 10 tens for this $100 bill? And the banker, of course, would say, of course, of course. That is a fair trade. So let me make sure that this is really true. I could maybe then I could trade my hundred for some tens and then share those out. Yes, I think this is the solution. Okay, help me count. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. All right, now I want to double check. I don't want to steal from the bank. All right, make sure I have 10 tens here. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Okay, I can get rid of this 100 and put it back in my bank. And now I can start sharing my tens. But first, I want to record my hundreds that I shared. Super, super important. Um, first, like we talked about last time, I'm going to record the answer up here for what one person gets. That is the key to division. You are going to record only what one person gets because that's what we're trying to find out, how much each one is going to get. So I can see that each person got one hundred. So I'm going to put one one hundred up there. And now comes the multiplication part. I want to see how many hundred dollar bills did I use from my money? Well, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. One times five is five. I used five hundred dollar bills. So I have to record that. I want to make sure I keep track of all my, my money here. I had six one hundreds and then I used five one hundred dollar bills to share with my friends and I have one left over. Remember that? And then I had to make an exchange. I had to change my 100 for extra tens. So let's see what happens now. I recorded how many hundreds I used, correct? And now I'm going to bring down that extra 100 that I had, my extra 10, excuse me. I'm going to bring down my tens and I should have 11 tens now. So let's see if I'm right. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Look at that. Isn't that the coolest thing? I had 10 here. I did my exchanging. I brought down my 110 and added it to my other tens. And now I have 11 tens to share. So let's get started and see how many tens each of my friends gets. One for you, one for you, one for you, one for you, and one for you. I have more tens to share, so I'm gonna keep going. One for you, and one for you, and one for you, and one for you, and one for you. Yay! So far everybody gets an even amount, but, uh-oh, should I do it? Should I give this extra 10 to somebody? <gasps> if I do that, the kids are gonna be so upset with me. They're gonna say, Heather, you're doing it again. You have to treat us equally here and we need an equal amount of money. They are right. So, 
first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to count how many tens I shared because, well, I can't share this one right now. So let me count how many I did get to share equally. And I'm going to record what one person gets. So, so far I can see here, one person gets 10, gets two $10 bills. So each kid gets to have two $10 bills. And now I need to multiply. I need to see how many tens did I use all together. Two times one, two, three, four, five is 10. If you don't know your multiplication facts super, super quick, you could count by twos. Two, four, six, eight, 10. I used 10, $10 bills. And now I'm gonna do some subtraction. I had 11 of these $10 bills. I only used 10. And so now I have one 10 left over, which is true, here it is. It's the one I didn't get to exchange yet. And, and now, oh, I'm gonna have to make another trade. How can I break this 10 up so I can share equally? Well, hmm, I know. I could do what we did last time and make an exchange. I could take these this $10 bill and get 10 ones, and that would equal the same thing. So let me try that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Whew. Let me make sure, double check, double check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yay! I was able to make an exchange, so I'm going to get rid of this ten and put it in the bank. So now I have ten of these that I could share, but I still have the two ones up above, and I need to make sure that I include these when I share out my ones. So I'm going to bring down these two dollars that I didn't use yet. Okay, so I'm actually physically going to bring down, 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 down they go. That's why we do this. And I'm gonna add it to the other 10 that I have. So 10, 11, 12. Isn't that so cool? That's why I have 12 here. I have 12 ones now that I'm gonna be sharing with my friends. Let's see if what's gonna happen now. One for you, one for you, one for you, one for you, and one for you. But I have more ones, so I have to keep going. One, 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 and one. <gasps> I, only, I have $2 left, and I can't exchange anymore. Take a look, the bank only goes down as low as $1. So this is, you guessed it, this is my remainder. I have $2 left over that I wasn't able to share with my friends, but I do want to record what I was able to share. So I'm going to record what one person, one person gets. So it looks to me like each person got $2 each. So $2. And now I'm going to do some multiplication. Two times one, two, three, four, five. Two times five is 10. I used that 10. I used 10 of my dollars. And now I'm gonna subtract to see how many are left over. And I hopefully have two. Let's see, two. One take away one is zero. And two take away zero is still two. Look at that. Two left over, just like we have in my pile up here. It matches. So when you write how much is left over, we call this a remainder. Remember, it's what we have left over that we just can't share equally. So I'm gonna put an R for remainder and two, because that's how much was left. And I'm gonna circle it. So if I wanna read this to you, it would sound like this. $612 divided by five, those are my five friends, equals 122 with a remainder of two. That means two left over. So each of my friends here from this talent show got to get $122 each for winning first place. And these extra $2, I don't know. 
Maybe they should be mine. Since I did all this hard math work, maybe I'll take that $2 extra and put it in my pocket for my for doing such a hard, hard math problem with you today. So thanks for stopping by. I hope that this lesson was helpful for you to see what remainders look like and how we go about recording that. And give it a try. Get some uh, play money and some toys and see what you can do with long division at your house. Uh, until then, I will see you next time. Bye!